How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine part 15 Modifying the tooth belt pulleys to make them look better If you take a look at the pulleys on this clip you will see that the flanges around the outside edge are not concentric with the main diameter of the pulley part This is an easy fix as I think I also mentioned in the previous episode Mount them on a mandrel and skim them with a lathe tool Before I get into this episode there are a couple of things that I need to tell everyone Please look at the title of this series, it is called How to Build a Blackgate's Twin Steam Engine and finding the best way to couple the engines together is just by way of an experiment. Call it entertainment, call it what you will. And here I'm experimenting with the position of the belt relative to the crankshafts on the engines. Just to see whether it makes it run better and, well, it doesn't really. The engines seem to run very well irrespective of the position of the pulleys relative to the crankshaft position. I really wish certain viewers wouldn't try and preempt the series all the time. The nuts that hold the springs in place will be lock nutted when it's all finished. When I run the engine slowly, you can see that they're working fine anyway, but when the engine runs fast, they just blur and look like they're not moving and the shafts are. Well, that's not the case. When I finish this project, the engines will be sold to raise money for Candlelighter's charity. And what I will be selling are a pair of these engines, complete with one reversing valve per engine. But I will also be supplying a really nice mahogany mounting base that will allow the engines to be ganged together to make a four-cylinder steam engine. What I'm trying to do is maximise the flexibility of these two engines. As a four-cylinder engine, it's amazingly powerful. That's why I've used the tooth belts. And talking of tooth belts, here are the pulleys on a mandrel in my lathe. Because the mandrel is only a quarter of an inch in diameter, I'm only going to be able to take very light cuts. But there's no rush. I machined the flanges first, and then I turned the centre very slightly. It wasn't really that much out of true, and I'm only doing it for appearance's sake, because I didn't like to see the pulleys looking a bit eccentric when the engine was working. One viewer mentioned that belt drives are not very steam engine-like. Well, if I think about it, don't steam engines usually have belts that drive counter shafts to drive machinery? But what do I know? I just make videos. I rejected the other methods on the grounds of reliability. I could have used gears. I could have used the small brass chains and sprockets made by Microcosm, but they are too weak. Something else I considered, because I've actually done this before on a very small engine, was to use some Meccano chains and sprockets. But in the end, I settled for the tooth belt drive. And I also mentioned in the last episode that an engine of this type inside the hull of a model boat, and I don't mean a Victorian steam launch, I mean a boat with a superstructure, will be out of sight anyway. I'd like to show in this clip why the belt is left purposely slack. The final drive from the engine will be via this small pulley that will sit on the belt. I need to make a special long bearing to hold the shaft, and this will sit between the engines and this bearing will apply just enough downward pressure to keep the belt tight. And this special centre bearing will also work with this larger pulley. I must admit that aesthetically I do prefer the smaller one. But in the finished package that I put up for sale, all these parts will be included. To put the minds at rest of the very small amount of viewers who are commenting saying I don't like this and I don't like that, well, don't worry about it. When you put your bid in to raise money for the charity, you will get two Blackgate's twin engines that will function as separate entities, complete with a nice baseboard made out of mahogany and a centre bearing on this baseboard, and each engine will have an individual reversing valve which also doubles as a throttle. One viewer was very concerned. He said, well, if you use one reversing valve, that's OK, but if you use two, how are you going to synchronise them? That could be a problem. Oh, all will be revealed in the fullness of time. I'm just threading the centre pulley, and here I'm painting the outer edges of the freshly machined main pulleys. And I'm using, as always, Phoenix Precision Paints Single Pack Etch Primer. And here, for certain viewers who seem to like it, is a picture of the paint drying. To be honest, I speeded this up using my blowtorch. I didn't get them too hot, I just warmed them up so I didn't have to wait the 24 hours for the paint to dry. And in this clip, I'm painting the outer rim of the pulleys using some Humbrol satin black. This is only a quick painting sequence, so don't get too excited. 
This painting is not really necessary, but when it's all together, you will see that the engine looks quite smart. And one more time, here is the paint drying. And this time, to add to the excitement, this is Humbrol Satin Black. And that's it for this episode. I hope I've alleviated some doubts and fears of some viewers. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.